Hello and welcome to Andre's YouTube blog for August 6, 2011. Now, in a little break from my tradition of not introducing any particularly difficult subjects on my YouTube vlogs, I've decided to talk about something that happened uh, on August 6, about 66 years ago, in another part of the world, a very far away part of the world. It's a very controversial thing. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos about it and had a lot of conversations with some of my friends about it, and it could engender a lot of hostility. But today is going to be the anniversary of the day that a weapon like no other was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Now, this year, Japan and another part of the country had dealt with an earthquake which damaged a nuclear power facility there. Seems that nuclear related tragedies seem to befall that country for whatever reason. Well, this is not about the politics of what happened 66 years ago or who did what wrong or who did what right. For more information on that, I suggest you look for this. It's called Barefoot Jen, a cartoon story of Hiroshima, written by Keiji Nakazawa. And he was a person who was known as a hibuksha. And a hibuksha is a Japanese word that translates to um, explosion affected or afflicted people. People who had illnesses and problems based on radioactivity from the bomb. Now, Actually, I decided since there have been some difficulties in my own life lately, there's an old phrase, you take lemons, make lemonade. Well, I wanted to talk to you today about a story I'm sure many of you know that I was read to as a young boy and as actually my first exposure to this particular um, story of um, Hiroshima. And it was about a young g girl named Sadako who was born in that city. And it wasn't until she was about 10 years old that she began suffering from the first signs of leukemia, resulting from radioactive contamination. Now, according to Japanese folk wisdom, the main way that a person would deal with illness was, according to legend, to fold a thousand paper cranes. And if you folded a thousand of these paper cranes, you would have good health and good fortune. Unfortunately, Sadako died after having folded only 640. Now, some of her fellow students and the people of her community contributed to that by folding the rest of the cranes for her, but she has since become a folk hero of that area. And there's, in fact, a statue of her at the Hiroshima Peace Museum, which is dedicated to discussing the incident. And basically, I decided that, you know, since there are many people out there who probably have different sorts of ailments, although none relating to something as unpleasant as what Sadako may have gone through, I decided to use this YouTube vlog as an opportunity to show you how I fold one of these paper cranes using, as you know, the Japanese folding paper art known as origami. I've been doing this for most of my life, and I've always enjoyed it. I never really got the knack of doing things other than cranes. But, you know, thinking about, you know, Sadako and, you know, her hope and her courage uh, to survive, I wanted to show you today the method in which um, I make these paper cranes. Now, it's best to have a flat surface when you do this because, you know, it's always hold of, hard to fold things when they're kind of, you know, suspended in the air. So, I'll show you what I usually do. First, you fold... the square piece of paper, such as this one, into this triangular shape. That's the first step that you do. Once you have that triangle, you want to take the lower corner here, kind of put your finger a little bit in the middle, and then move that paper up this way to create another type of triangle. I'm sorry, I'm doing this really sloppily, and you're probably not seeing everything I'm doing, but I mean, this is just how I fold these paper cranes. I never really did anything instructional on YouTube before, so you're going to have to forgive me. And see, that's the basic shape that you want. And then you want to repeat that action on the other side.
So basically you have what they call a diamond shape. In terms of origami, they have a more specific name for this shape, but it looks like a diamond. Now, after that, you take the middle like this, open it up into kind of a bowl, bowl shape, and then carefully fold the corners. This is one of the most complicated parts of making cranes. This way. And keep pressing it down, and then do the same thing on the other side. And at this point, you'll notice that the origami crane is starting to take on a more obviously bird-like shape. Again, there are people that are much better at doing this than I am, but, you know, I think I'm pretty good at it, considering I've been doing it for a number of years, and I'm over 30 now, so I have had enough practice, I probably. And you do the same thing on the other side, so basically, you go from a fat diamond shape to a slimmer diamond shape. See? There you have it. Now see where it opens up a little bit here? You want to take that and fold each corner toward the middle. Like so. And now we're actually getting down to the last step, so there we go. Now my crane's going to be a little bit sloppy because of the fact that, you know, actually folding the perfect paper crane would take a lot longer a time than a YouTube video would have, and I even have trouble with it myself, but, you know, the idea is, you know, the crane itself, so that's the important thing about this level of instruction. And you want to do it on both sides, and I'll show you what the end result is going to look like. And remember, have a lot of square paper on handy, even little um, notepad paper the square will do. You don't need origami paper, You just any square paper, even a napkin, you know, would do for this. There's a story I read once about a boy who folded a paper crane out of napkins and it came to life and entertained at this uh, man's restaurant. Anyway, here's the fold, see? Now, take one side and push it up like that and then fold it around the corner so it's a little neat. See that? There you go. And then do the other side. Take it up the middle. Fold it up that way. So it's kind of equal on either side. See, actually it's getting much more bird-like. Then take one end, let's say this one, fold it toward the middle to make the head. See? And now, take the wings and There you have it. A perfect paper crane. You know, uh, stripping all the politics of war and such aside from what happened in Hiroshima, it's just a reminder of a comment that another of these Hibuksha said once, and I believe this person is still alive, that there are two kinds of courage in the world. There's the courage to live and the courage to die. Some of the people in life who have survived absolute tragedy don't always have the courage to live. Many people die, but good things can come from them. In a way, because of Sadako's wish to fold a thousand of these beautiful little paper cranes, the entire world, Western and Eastern, now knows the art of origami. And usually the paper crane is one of the first forms taught. I used to have them all over my room, especially when I was sick or depressed. I always really enjoyed that folk wisdom. Thought it had a lot of meaning. So when you think of something as grisly as what happened in that Japanese prefectural city 66 years ago, and how the mere mention of it for a lot of people brings up anger and upsetting conversations, and the people who went through it actually feel themselves to be unrecognized victims even in their own country, these hibuksha I'm discussing, and considering the recent Japanese nuclear power plant disaster, sometimes the worst of things can in life can actually result in even one little thing like this, the world over, 
It's very beautiful. Just a little positive thought for you all out there. Peace, man.